I love interference videos. Do you want to see something really neat? Yeah. A bit of fun. <laughs> Okay, single or double is the name of the game, but it's not Wimbledon from which I hail. What am I? Well, if I were to take a guess, I'm thinking because I'm manager and learning and development here at JTV, whatever's in the box could be something related, job related. Maybe it's a piece of testing equipment, maybe? Gemstone? Let's open the lid and have a look. <laughs> well, we have in here a little flat light, which is neat. We have this little guy. And I do believe that we have to open him up. There we go. He is a traveling polariscope. And he sits nicely on there, all ready to go for testing. As gemologists, we use this to determine whether a gem is maybe singly refracting, doubly refracting, um, whether it's under strain or whether it's microcrystalline or polycrystalline. So it's, it's a useful tool for sort of separate, initial separation of, of various different um, gemstones. You have two pieces of polarizing filter, one at the bottom and one at the top here, and it sits over a light source. In this particular case, we're using a a flat light. This particular type of polariscope, it's really great if you're doing a lot of gem testing on the road. So if you're an appraiser who's going um, to clients, because it folds down really neatly, like so, and then you can just slip it in your, your gem kit. Some of the other units are quite large and you have to plug them into the into the mains power so they're not so portable so so this is really great if you're doing a lot of hands-on gemology and you're moving around a lot as well so i think this is a great opportunity for us to actually now for me to show you how to use a polariscope but we're going to switch over to using the the bench model the larger model just for for, for ease of use Okay, so here we have another type of polariscope. This is a, a bench model, so it's um, plugged into the mains. It's much bigger, as you can see, compared to our little traveling uh, model. So if we just switch it on, it's got inbuilt illumination under the stage here. We've got two pieces of polarizing filter, one which is um, set down at the bottom here, and then one um, which is at the top here. So light will travel up through and it will reach the first polarizing filter. Um, that polarizing filter will organize the light into very particular directions. It'll carry on up through and depending on the position of this top, um, the light will either come through or it will be blocked. So you'll, it'll either appear light or dark. To set this up, gemologists always require these polarizing filters to be in what we call the crossed position. So when we look down through this top um, polarizing filter, which we call the analyzer, it appears dark. We can place a gemstone on this bottom filter and rotate it. Whilst we're doing that, we're observing it down through this top analyzing filter and we're looking for particular patterns of light or dark that may appear within the gemstone that will help us um, decide the optical character of that gem. So it's not necessarily going to tell us definitively what that gem is, but it's going to narrow down our options. So whether that gem might be singly refracting, is the gem doubly refracting? Perhaps our gem is either polycrystalline or um, microcrystalline, or perhaps our gemstone is under internal stress. And this can be prevalent in, in some synthetics and in things like man-made glass as well. Okay, so the important thing is with testing, first of all, whatever it is you're testing, it can be rough, it can be cut, it can be mounted. If we can't get light through that, gem, whatever it is we're testing, then we're not going to get good clear results. So all we would do is um, take our gem. I'm going, to, I'm going to use this rough crystal, so you can test crystals as well. And you would place it on this 
bottom filter here. Remember, our polarizers have to be in the crossed position, so I'm just gonna go down and make sure we're nice and dark, that's fine. And then what I'm gonna do is rotate the gem. Now you can either do this by rotating it on the glass stage here, which is sitting over the, the filter, or you can, you can do it with your hands, whichever. And as I look down here, the crystal is going light and then dark and then light and then dark. So it's turning light dark four times with each 360 degree rotation. Now, as a gemologist, I know then that that um, crystal is telling me that that stone is doubly refracting. What does double, doubly refracting actually mean? Well, light will enter into them not only does that light bend, but it also splits into two plane polarized rays. And this splitting um, is, is allowing um, some of that light to pass through this top, top filter occasionally. This is why we're getting this light, dark, light, dark. It's a little bit complicated, a little bit of science there, so just keeping it um, on a little bit more of a, of a basic level, but light, dark, light, dark. This red faceted gem here, I'm gonna pop him table down onto the glass stage at the bottom here. And then just looking down through the top of um, the analyzer filter, I'm just gonna rotate the glass stage. And the stone is remaining dark through rotation through 360 degrees. Now just to make absolutely sure everything's okay, I'm just gonna do a, a double test. I'm just gonna change the position of that gemstone so he's resting on the back facet and he is still remaining dark. Now the reason I've done this and the reason why it's good to test a, a gemstone through a different direction is just to make sure that you're not in a direction where the crystal or the gemstone is interacting with the light slightly differently and giving us a false result. It's always best to test in multiple directions. Because the gem is remaining dark on rotation as a gemologist, this gem is singly refracting. Now it hasn't actually told me what the gem is, just that it's singly refracting. Now singly refracting actually means that, so light will go into these gems, um, although it slows down when it hits the gem, it will just carry on its way. Uh, I'm gonna try this little cabochon next. Now this time the gem is lay, staying light through 360 degree rotation. This is telling me that this gem is polycrystalline or microcrystalline. Basically that means that it's made up of lots and lots and lots of lots of individual crystals highly compressed together. And the way in which the light works with those crystals is always letting some of the light through and in a particular direction that are up through this top top uh, analyzer filter here. And finally, this big blue stone here. Wow. This time I'm seeing an amazing moving pattern within the stone. So it looks like arms which cross and uncross as we rotate the stone. Now this is evidence of strain within this material. And it's highly indicative of um, paste, artificial um, glass. So if I see that pattern, I know for sure that we've got um, a, a paste here. So sometimes when we um, are viewing a crystal or a gemstone under the um, polariscope, we may see a rainbow of colors in a patch or throughout the whole gemstone. What this means is we're looking at a direction called, or down a direction called the optic axis. Now this is a direction of single refraction that can sometimes be seen in doubly refracting gemstones. We can use an instrument called a conoscope when we see those colors. And then you may see a particular pattern within your conoscope. And depending on what that pattern is, will indicate whether your gem or crystal belongs to either a, a crystal system ending in AL, so that's trigonal, hexagonal, tetragonal, or whether that gem crystal belongs to a crystal system ending in IC, so monoclinic, triclinic, or thrombic. So we haven't necessarily identified what it is, but we've narrowed down our options because we now know what crystal system or one of those two groups of crystal systems it might belong to.
Now the really cool thing is that there is one gem material which has a very particular um, optic figure and it's diagnostic for its type. And this is quartz. Now I have here some quartz, little quartz spheres. Now the neat thing with, with these quartz spheres is we don't need the conoscope to see the interference figure. It does it for us because of its shape. And I'm rotating the gem and in a particular direction, I'm seeing a very particular interference pattern. It's made up of two dark arms, which do not intersect in the center of the sphere. The center of the sphere is made up of various different colors. It looks a little bit like a bullseye effect. And in fact, this is called a bullseye interference figure, and it is diagnostic for quartz. This is mica. So it's, it's not a, a gem, it's just mica. <laughs> but if you pop that mica underneath the polariscope, you get some amazing interference colors. And then you can just use your conoscope and get some really neat, um, a really neat interference pattern. As always, these tests should always be used in conjunction with other um, tests such as observation, refractometer, so on and so forth, just to make sure you get an overall picture of what you're testing. So if you're starting out in gem testing, then um, you don't have to go for really big units and more expensive units like the bench polariscope. You can go for more um, cost-effective options such as a traveling polariscope. So have a search around and, and see what's cost-effective for, for you in regards to building up a good gem testing equipment. But I would say the most essential of all, if you're just starting out from absolute scratch, um, a loop, 10 times loop, stone, clo stone cloth and stone tongs and a good light source is absolutely essential. That's your basic foundations. And then build up your range of testing equipment from there.